select your cones. You need large pyrometric cones, not small cones or self-supporting cones. You need three cones. You need the guide cone, which is going to melt sooner than your target cone. You need your target cone, which is the temperature you'll be firing to. And you need your guard cone, which will let you know if things are getting too hot in the kiln. Make sure that you understand the cone numbering system so that you're able to accurately arrange your cones from coolest to hottest in your cone pack. I'll be making two cone packs in this video, one with a target temperature of cone 04 and the other with a target temperature of cone 06. To make my cone 04 cone pack, I'm laying out the three cones that I'll need. Cone 05 will be my guide cone. This is the one that will melt first and will let me know that cone 04 will drop soon. Cone 04 is my target cone. That's the temperature that I'm firing to. That will be in the middle of the cone pack. And then my guard cone, cone 03. This will warn me if things are getting too hot in the kiln. For the cone 6 cone pack, I'm going to do the same thing. Cone 5 will be the coolest, that will be my guide cone, and then cone 6 is my target cone, and finally cone 7 is my guard cone. If you set a cone on the table, it already leans in the direction that it wants to fall. That's the angle that you want to place the cone in the cone pack. Make sure that all the cones are facing the same direction so that you can get accurate results. With a small piece of clay, make a coil about the thickness of your finger. You only need the coil to be slightly wider than the cones. Place your coil on a paper towel or a canvas so that it won't stick to the table. Begin with your coolest cone, the cone that will melt first. This is the guide cone. As you push it into the clay, make sure that you maintain the angle built into the cone. I like to push my cone all the way down through the coil so that it rests on the table and I can make sure that I haven't changed the angle with clay underneath. Gently squeeze the clay around the cone to help hold it in place. Repeat this process by putting your target cone behind your guide cone. You don't need a lot of space in between them. Again, maintain the natural angle of the cone. And then finally by putting your guard cone behind that. Again, you don't need a lot of space in between the cones. Trim away any excess clay. You really only need enough clay to hold the cones together. I'm using my needle tool to poke a lot of holes in the clay. This helps the clay to dry more quickly and more evenly and if this were to go into a glaze firing where the ramping is faster than a bisque, it will help prevent the clay pack from exploding. A 
Another thing to notice about how I've placed the cones into the coil is that they are facing so that they will fall slightly to the back rather than directly in a row. This is because you run the risk of one cone melting and then the next falling into that and not being able to fully fall. Here's an illustration of what I mean. In example A, the cones are placed directly in a row and the second cone is starting to fall into the first cone. In example B, they're falling slightly behind one another and that lets you see how each cone is melting. Here's a fired cone pack and an unfired cone pack. The fired one helps you to see how one cone will fall slightly behind another if you put them at the correct angle. To make my other cone pack with a target temperature of cone 6, I'm going to use the exact same technique that I used for the other cone pack. You do want to make sure in a cone 6 firing that you have clay that um, doesn't mature before cone 6 so that you're not melting your clay. all three cones at the same time. It's really important to make sure that the angle is correct, otherwise you could get inaccurate results. This cone pack is far too vertical. These cones are far too upright. This is not going to give you accurate results in the kiln. Here's an example of cones at the correct angle. This photo shows two cone packs that were fired next to one another in the same firing. The one on the left, the cones started out in the correct position and the one on the right they were a little bit too upright and you can see that it looks like drastically different results. 